Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Figma just released this amazing new feature called the glass effect. This is a default effect that they've added to the effects panel. And it comes with some really cool features like changing the lighting, the refraction for the glass. They've also added the much needed blur or frosted glass effect in this case, which is very important for accessibility as we all know. This is very similar to the Apple liquid glass and this is where the trend is starting from. This five minute tutorial will explain everything as well as show you exactly how to use it for both just basic effects as well as animations. Let's check this out. Okay, so to begin with, I've added this nice little M image through Unsplash into an artboard in Figma. Now this effect won't work on rectangles and shapes. This will work only for frames right now. I'm gonna click on F on my keyboard or A on my keyboard, either work. And then I'm just gonna drag out in the middle of this. And as you can see, I've created a frame, just blank and there's nothing here. But on the right, we have effects. I'm gonna click on effect and just gonna drag this out for now. Right at the bottom, there's something called glass. Right now it's still in beta, so it's gonna be slightly buggy, but it works perfectly fine for me right now. As you can see, there's a nice little glass. You can see this, but most people will not be able to see this properly. So we go back into effects, open this window once again, and here we can change attributes for this. So we can change the direction of light. So if there is say a video or an image or elements which are coming from the top right, just change the lighting to the top right by dragging this, this little nice little light. Very intuitive, very easy to use. One thing I would prominently say to you guys is just keep this consistent for your entire website and don't keep changing it randomly. So choose a uh, certain degrees and a certain intensity based on the glass. In this case, 80 to 90% is great. Now once the lighting is set, I can now change the depth of the glass. So if the glass is a very thin glass, it would be below 20 or below 30. If it, the thicker it gets, see how the image distorts. It's a very weird effect. It'll work in certain stylized effects, but for most people, they'll keep it under 20 or 30 for a natural liquid glass effect. Dispersion is something that you can work on, but dispersion won't change all the attributes as much. With frost effect, this is what I like the most right now because liquid glass has accessibility issues. A lot of people can't see liquid glass very well if they have certain issues with their eyesight. This will be terrible in certain conditions. So you wanna increase the frost to somewhere around 20. I found 20 to be a perfect number. Above that, you create a super reflect, super frosty effect, which in most cases will look less like glass and more like plastic. But in this case, let's just keep it to 20. Perfect. Now that we have a perfect liquid glass, I can change other properties like, like the corner radius, for example, to make it look more like the liquid glass that Apple has. What can I do with this? I can then tweak this or edit this different kinds of appearances. So it could be color burn, lighten, screen. As you can see, things now change based on the lighting that you applied earlier. So this is a nice little trick to create, for example, like this, this weird dreamy vibe or dreamy effect that you want to build. We will now be able to animate this and it will work perfectly with our smart animations. Just for the speed of it, I'm not gonna create a component and then animate it. For now, I'm just gonna use two artboards and animate between those. Now, before we animate, the best way to animate would also be to give it a little bit of a color. So I can reduce the opacity of the color from here individually, not the entire, not the entire frame, but just the color to say 10%. And I can make this say a black. So it'll be more like a dark mode. And then I'm going to duplicate that. So it just makes life easier. Now with the color, I can play around. So I can make this 40% or 25%. And then I can push this up a little bit. So it moves. I can also change the glass effect a little bit just to show that, okay, it's changing state. I can reduce or increase the frost look depending on what you want it to be. Of course, frost, increased frosted look will make it easier for the user to make a decision, easier to read, easier everything. And maybe I will change the light as well. So if the light is coming from the top right, if it moves up a little bit, maybe I'll make it move to the right like this or make it move to the top. Maybe the light is also changing in this. Now we have two states right here. I'm going to animate between this by clicking on prototype and just selecting this, dragging this little line out to the second one. And instead of saying instant, I'll say smart animate. And as I hover over this, as you can see, the state changes a little bit. I'm not perfect at it yet. I still have to practice this, but it looks really good. It looks really good. If there were icons and stuff, you can make them interact as well. It's super smooth. 
something that I wasn't expecting from the beta, but it's here. I will show some examples on screen on how Fig the team at Figma has used this effect with their own designs. And yes, the new iOS 26, iPad OS 26 UI kits and design libraries are now officially available on Figma as well. So as this is being launched, the new resources are being uploaded. I'll have all the links in the description so you can check it out. And for more such design tips, tricks, tutorials and more, make sure you subscribe to my channel content every single week without fail. I'll see you next time. Until next time, take care. God bless.